All right, four dash two, triangle congruence by SSS and SAS. Now, this SSS, all right, each S stands for the word side. So this is triangle congruence by side, 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 and side angle side. All right, so we're going to go over, we're going to go over a few of these. Anytime you see an S, it's side. Anytime you see an A, it's angle. All right, so triangle congruence by side, 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 and side, angle, side. So our objective here is to prove two triangles congruent using the side, 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 and side, angle, side postulates. So this is what we learned last video. If we know that all these angles here are congruent to these angles over here, as well as these three sides are congruent to these three sides, then we know that both of these triangles are congruent. However, this is more information about corresponding parts than you need to prove the triangles congruent. Right? You don't need to know this large amount of information. It's nice to know it, but you don't have to. Right? So our focus question for today's lesson is, is there a way to prove triangles congruent with less information? All right, so let's get started here. This is kind of like your vocab. There's no, there's no new vocab for this video, but I do want you to write these down. We have the side, side, side postulate, which says, in words, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. All right, so here we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Since side AB is congruent to DE, indicated by the same number of tick marks, and BC congruent to EF, and then AC congruent to DF, since we know that all three pairs of sides are congruent, then we know by the side, side, side postulate, or the SSS postulate, that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So as you can see here, we don't actually need any of the angles. All right. As long as we know that all three sides are the same length, you can only arrange those side lengths in one particular order, meaning that angle D now will have to be congruent to A, angle B will have to be congruent to E, and angle C will have to be congruent to F. All right, because you can only rearrange them in one specific triangle. All right, it's impossible to do any other triangle except this one that's pictured. Okay, you can do a similar, um, a similar thing using straws and string, um, but I'm not going to go over that right now. All right, so if all three sides are marked congruent, then we know the triangles are congruent by the side, side, side postulate. All right, make sure you write this down and remember it. The second one down here is postulate 4-2. Remember, don't, don't remember these postulate numbers. They, they really don't mean much. They can change from book to book. Important part, remember this title. Side angle side or the SAS postulate. What that says is if two sides in the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides in the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So what does it mean by two sides in the included angle? Well, if you look here, BC, I'm sorry, AB is congruent to DE, and AC is congruent to DF. Now, the angle included between them, all right, is physically the angle made up by those two sides, all right? So, angle BAC is the angle between them, because as you can see, side AB and side AC physically make angle A. Same thing on this side. Side DE and side DF physically make angle D. So this would be your side angle and your side, your side, your angle, and your side. Now, it has to be, for side angle side postulate, it has to be the included angle. All right. They named it this way for a reason. The angle has to be 
in between the two sides. Okay, it has to be in between the two sides. It has to be included between the two sides, just like we have here. Angle A is included between A, B, and A, C. Same with angle D between D, E, and D, F. It has to be the included angle. All right. So if we know that this side, this angle, and this side is congruent to this side, this angle, and this side, then we know the triangles are congruent by the side angle side postulate. All right, that's how it has to be. It has to be the included angle. All right, it has to be the included angle. So, on a little side note here, let me erase all this. All right, say instead of A, I'm going to scratch this out. It was angle C. Scratch this out. It was angle F. Is this enough information to prove these triangles congruent by side angle side postulate? The answer is no. If you take this angle, and instead of making angle A congruent to D, if all you know is these two sides, and then C is congruent to F, this would be side-side angle, side-side angle, or angle side-side, angle side-side. That does not work, okay? Side-side angle, side-side angle. That does not work, all right? S, S, A, or the reverse, I'm not going to write the reverse, all right, is not a postulate to prove triangles congruent. All right, remember that. Write that down. Make a note of that. Write it in red. Highlight it. Bold it. Whatever you want to do. But make sure you remember that side, side, angle, or the reverse, angle, side, side, is not a postulate. You cannot use it to prove triangles congruent. All right, if you do two angles in a side, if you do two angles in a side, it has to be the side included, I'm sorry, it has to be the angle included between the sides. All right, it cannot be out, it cannot be outside the two sides. All right, so identifying congruent triangles, would you use side, 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 or side, angle, side to prove the following triangles congruent? Well, let's look at letter A. We have this side here congruent to this side here. All right, and then we have these two sides congruent, and then we have these two angles congruent. All right, well, for side, 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 we have to be able to prove all three sides congruent. Do we know if all three of these sides are congruent? No, we don't. So we cannot use side, side, side. What about side, angle, side? Okay, well, we do have two sides proven congruent, which is what we need, and then we have an angle. But remember, the angle has to be the angle included between the two sides. Okay, it has to be the angle that is physically made up of the two sides. The two sides make the angle. So, do these two sides make this angle? Yes, they do. Do these two sides make this angle? Yes, they do. So, our answer here is we can use the side angle side postulate because two pairs of corresponding sides and their included angles are congruent. All right, because like I said, this is physically the angle between the two sides. All right, it's physically the angle between the two sides. Let's look at B. Can we use side, side, side? Well, we've only got two sides proven congruent. So no, we can't. We cannot use side, side, side. Can we use side, angle, side? All right, let's look at this angle. Is this angle included between these two sides? Yes, it is. What about this angle? Is it the angle included between these two sides? No, it's not. So we cannot use either postulate. So there is not enough information. Two pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, but one of the angles is not the included angle. All right. So you can see the difference here. These two triangles, it is the included angle, whereas this triangle, it is not the included angle. All right, and since all three sides aren't proved congruent, we do not have enough information here to use either one of our postulates we just learned. All right, what about this third? What about C, letter C? Can we use side, side, side? Well, 
this side's congruent to that one, this one's congruent to that one, and this one's congruent to that one. So yes, we can use our side, side, side postulate because three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. Can we use side angle side? Not on this one, no, because we don't have any of the angles marked congruent. We just have the three sides, which is plenty of enough, which is plenty of information um, to prove them congruent. All right, let's look at D. Can we use side, side, side? Well, this one's congruent to this one, this one's congruent to this one, this one's congruent to this one. So yes, we can use side, side, side. But now, can we use side, angle, side? I'm going to give you a minute. See if you can figure it out. All right, if you said yes, you can, you are correct. Because remember, these are vertical angles, making them congruent. All right, so we have this side congruent to this side, these angles congruent, and then this side congruent to this side. So it is the included angle between two corresponding congruent sides. All right, so for this one, we can use side, 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 or side, angle, side, because all three pairs of corresponding sides and a pair of included angles, the vertical angles, are congruent. So you can use either method for this one. For letter D, you can use either method that we just learned. All right. And on a test, if I ask you, you can give me either one. I won't count either one of them wrong for a, for a problem like this. All right. All right. Here's a you try or got it. I don't know if I'm going to change the name yet or not. Don't know if I'm sold on the got it. But anyway. Would you use side, 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 or side, angle, side to prove the triangles at the right congruent? Explain. So take a few minutes, pause the video, and see if you can figure this out. All right, so here we go. Side, side, side. Remember, with side, 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 they've all three got to be congruent. Are they all three congruent? Well, this one's congruent to that one. This one's congruent to that one. That one's congruent. So, yes, we can use side, side, side because all three corresponding sides are congruent. All right, so we can do that. Now, can we use side angle side? So now we have to look at our angle. Well, our angle here is included between the, the side with three tick marks and the side with two tick marks. Over here, our angle is included between the side with one tick mark and two tick marks. All right, since, since this angle is not the same angle as this angle, we cannot use side angle side. All right, we would either need this angle marked in this triangle or this angle marked in this triangle. So we cannot use side, 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 I mean, sorry, side, angle, side, because the angles are not the included angles. Oops, if I can spell. Because both angles are not the included angles. All right, both angles are not the included angles, so we cannot use side angle side, but we can use side side side. All right, so we know these triangles are congruent because of side side side. All right, so we really didn't need to even need to look at side angle side. Like if this was a test question, you wouldn't even have to consider side angle side because you've already proved you've already proved them congruent with side side side. So there's no need to even look at any of the other ones that we're going to go over. On, it, on test or a quiz, for instance, because you've already labeled them as congruent, so you can just label it, explain it, and move on. You don't have to say, well, it's not because of this and it's not because of this, all right? So remember that focus question from the beginning that said, is there a way to prove triangles congruent with less information, all right? You should know the answer by now is yes. By using the side, 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 and side angle, side postulates, you can prove two triangles congruent. Side, side, side says you only need three pairs of congruent corresponding sides. And side angle side says you only need two pairs of congruent corresponding sides. The included angles must also be corresponding and congruent. So now you know that you do not need to prove 
everything from both triangles congruent. You only need side, 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 or side, angle, side. In the next video, we're going to go over a few more. All right. So here's your ticket in the door. Number one, in triangle pen, name the angle that is included between the given sides. So name the included angle between side PE and EN and side NP and PE. In triangle hat, between which sides is the given angle included? At A, angle H, B, angle T. For numbers three and four, name the postulate you would use to prove the triangles congruent. Number five, you can skip. I don't really like that question. Number six, error analysis. Your friend thinks that, thinks that the triangles shown below are congruent by side, angle, side. Is your friend correct? Explain. So if he is correct, explain. If he's not correct, explain. And then number seven, a carpenter trims a triangular peak of a house with three seven-foot pieces of molding. The carpenter uses 21 feet of molding to trim a second triangular peak. Are the two triangles formed congruent? Explain. All right, make sure you have this ready when you come in the door tomorrow. Good luck.